As the uh, policy chairman, the gentleman from Alabama, Mr. Palmer, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. DeJoy, for being here. Um, the Postal Service has continued to lose money, and, and you originally claimed um, that the Postal Service would break even in 2023, but mm -hmm. um, that obviously hasn't happened. Uh, do you have a, a new estimate for when the Postal Service might be able to break even? We're, we are trying to uh, 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 reconcile that right now. The reason There's three reasons, three basic reasons we did not make, uh, uh, make our targets. Number one, CSRS. Uh, administrative action was in our plan. Uh, that was $3 billion in our current P&L uh, this, this year. Uh, number two, inflation uh, was way above what we predicted inflation to be in that plan. And we, although we've been raising prices, we, it's always in arrears, our inflation. And that's the tune of $2 billion. $2 billion. And then we have, we, we've tried to, in the middle of the process of doing this, uh, we needed to focus first on getting, you know, keeping service up and getting into a position where we could start making tactical moves like moving significant, we've moved significant amount of volume off of, off of air to ground. It's going to drive about a billion dollars out of our run, you know, run, run rate. Uh, so these are the things, and that the place was just a little more broke. <laughs> then, uh, then, then we were coming in six months into uh, uh, this and do it. But we, I, you know, we need to move, uh, uh, and we can we can get back on 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 track with this. I see where targets of of money are for us to get just by improving our operational performance and growing our our, our business. But we're behind. We we're not happy with it. But there were you know there were, you know significant events that. Uh, 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 we, we needed to deal with. You made some significant changes. Actually, you answered my next question about the impact of inflation, and and I, I guess I also wonder about how things have impacted your workforce participation. Uh, and, uh, having uh, enough people uh, to do the jobs that need to be done, have you had a diff any difficulty in, in getting people to work? Well, I, I'd say it's it, it's it, it's different in different functions and in, 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 in areas within our plant processing operations. Uh, 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 for, you know, first of all, I've converted a, we have converted 125,000 people from pre-career to full-time positions within the United States Postal Service, and that dramatically reduces our turnover rate and it, and, 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 and it endears the, the individual to the organization for long-term career employment. So from that standpoint, for the most part, our employee availability today is pretty high, uh, other than in certain areas uh, uh, that, uh, that the 2% that we're having a problem on delivery. Delivery ca carriers is our toughest area right now. Um, you made some pretty significant changes to the Delivering for America plan, and, and just very briefly, do the changes take into account um, the, the probability of a lower volume of regular mail and packages, uh, the potential for a, a downturn, possibly even a recession in the economy? Have, have you taken that into account, uh, particularly for the short term? Um, so we, we do forecast for that. What I would tell you, sir, is we are in the process of repairing a 15-year atom bomb that fell on the place. Mm -hmm. So a quarter or two in terms of our long-term strategy uh, is not going to uh, uh, change the infrastructure rehabilitation that, that we need to uh, 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 do. And we have confidence that in the long run, the country will get through its economic problems and we'll be, you know, back to business. And we need to, United States Postal Service needs to, and it's in the, it's in the uh, uh, PSRA, we need to deliver mail and packages together in an integrated manner. I, uh, I want to quickly transition to something else, and it has to do with uh, the pensions for your, your uh, employees. And the post office is required, they're, they're limited in, in what they can invest in to just federal treasury bonds. And, and you've got $298 billion in assets and in, in the employee pensions, if you had had the opportunity to to have the same investment strategy as the uh, uh, federal employees retirement plan, uh, civil service retirement plan, uh, some of the projections I've seen is, is it could be 1.2 trillion, and uh, I, I just 
I, I wonder what the barriers are that, that keeps the Postal Service from adopting uh, a different model, the, even the model of the federal uh, employees. Uh, and is this something that, that we ought to be looking into uh, in this committee? So this is one of the big, big uh, uh, initiatives that our chairman, Roman Martinez, had asked our, uh, our OIG to take a look at. Uh, uh, and it is about 700, instead of being at a deficit, we'd be at $700 billion. It, it, it changes the whole, uh, the whole dynamic of what the organization uh, needs to do. Uh, it, it would be a legislative requirement, just like CSRS is an administrative requirement. It's the same thing, when we take postal funds, because all our money is raised by selling postal products. And then we have to, we put it into the federal, you know, you know, treasury, you know, federal treasuries to, to manage for, for our retirement. Uh, we have the same thing with CSRS. When the, when the Postal Service was established in 1970, we think, like, we didn't do a very accurate job of accounting for what liabilities should have stayed with the federal government and what liabilities they gave to us for our long-term uh, 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 you know, for our long-term uh, re retirement plans. And both of those things are, would significantly change the, the, the demands on our cash flow, uh, uh, which our cap, we know, my, my personal opinion is mail is no longer a monopoly. The delivery of mail is no longer a monopoly, right? It's an obligation. We have $40, $40 billion of mail probably costs us $65 billion to deliver to 163 million addresses. So we have to get a fair share of the package business, and that's what we're trying to do uh, 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 in aligning these things. And these are financial burdens that we have that, uh, 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 we, that we believe we shouldn't. So anything that this Congress can do to address both CSRS reform and any portion, any portion of our retirement investment to have a little more commercial appeal to it uh, would be extremely helpful, uh, uh, you know, to the organization's long-term sustainability. I thank the witness and I thank the chairman. Gentleman uh, yields back.